If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Guys, I love Anchor. It's been allowing me to edit, add music, be all over the internet. Like, I love it. Totally recommend it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Glamour Magic Beauty Podcast. I'm Trishelle, your podcast host, owner of the company as well. And I'm going to be here today and I'm going to be doing a movie review and analysis on one of my favorite movies called Eve's Bayou. Eve is in Adam and Eve and Bayou, B-A-Y-O-U. Bayou is in like piece of smoking but bayou as in like piece of uh land like a piece like a setting so east bayou is a spiritual film well it's what i would consider a spiritual spiritual film the proper genre is it is a southern gothic and i love that movie have y'all seen it if you haven't seen it or if you're gonna watch it um or if you have watched it today my review may make you see things from a different lens and I may point out some things that you may have missed. I want this video to, or this podcast to be able to be used by um, professors and people in academia. So I am going to really break things down and give like a full analysis and all that stuff because you know, I've seen to probably analyze something. You have to watch it like more than once, and I've seen the movie more than once because I like the movie, and so I picked up on things over time with watching it. And I and then another reason why I do feel the need to do a review is because I like the movie. It does have a spiritual theme, and somebody commented on Instagram one time about this film, and they were like, "I never really got what it was about. They didn't really get it." And I was like, damn, they don't understand the movie. So I had to break down a couple of things then. And I definitely want to go full force now. So let's talk about Eve's Bayou. Eve's Bayou is a Southern Gothic. Gothic. It was released in 1997. I was born in 1996, like the ass end of 96. So yeah, I'm about as old as the movie. Um, So it's set in rural Louisiana in a town called Eve's Bayou. This town is predominantly Creole American. Um, It's extremely important that I point that out. Um, I mean, it's a black cast. So not only is it a Southern Gothic, but it's like a black film. um, Because all of the characters in the movie are black. And not just black, but they are Creole. And it is set in Louisiana. So you are going to get that element especially with it being a southern gothic this movie talks about spiritualism this movie talks about the supernatural this movie talks about the other realm the other dimension you know spirits stuff like that um i like this movie because i'm from new orleans i'm a native new orleanian and as a person from new orleans um you know hollywood can show voodoo and hoodoo and spiritual gifts and all that other stuff it can really show it in a negative light and this movie handles those topics really really well I do think that part of the reason why this movie handles those type of sensitive topics well is because I think the movie is uh produced and I think at least directed and maybe written by black people I'd have to look it up but um but let's talk about the film right creole american let some people don't know what creole is for those who don't know what it is technically the word creole i'm listening to an outcast y'all but creole is like technically means when i've done my research it means like a mix so creole american are just people in america who happen to be from spanish native american um spanish as in like from spain native american african american descendants of slaves so these um usually are like people from like west africa region and yeah some french people too some french so which is how they get you know the creole language or creole language um it's just a mix of different language languages 
Creole is kind of like a bastardized French. Um, I know a little bit of French. And a, Creole is, you know, if you know, if you know some French, you can fuck with Creole. But when it comes to Creole, it is not an official language. And it is, you know, it has its own swag to it. So that's a whole other thing. But in this movie, they do speak a little bit of, I think, Creole and some French. So that is a, this is a good movie if you want to know just some basic conversational French. And I picked up on it once I put subtitles on I because sometimes with French um as a person again who's taken French sometimes if you don't it, it can go by really quick as a person who has been speaking English all their life and has learned a little bit of German rough languages like that are a little bit easier to learn than romance languages or they're easier to hear because romance languages the words just glide into one another whereas english is kind of choppy so if you don't have subtitles on i recommend if it's your first time watching it watch it with subtitles because you need to pick you want to pick up on some of that french it makes the movie just that much better you want to be able to pick up on some of that because it totally can change the way you're picking up on the conversation so just a tip so I like this movie also because it shows Creole people looking like believable and not stereotypical Creole people. The movie stars Samuel Jackson, who is the man. He is Louis Baptiste. Their names are also really believable because a friend of mine who is actually Haitian, her last name is Jean Baptiste. So the people have believable names um Samuel Jackson's the husband and the patriarch of the family Louis Baptiste or Baptiste and then his wife is Roz who is played by native um Louisianian she's from Baton Rouge Lynn Whitfield um who's Roz Baptiste they have kids Journey Bell who is what's the name what's her red she's known as red because she has ginger hair but stuff like that is can totally happen with creole jeans not everybody who's creole there's a misconception that, oh creole means i'm light skin light eyes light hair not not at all um so i liked how the characters are shown and then megan good is in this movie as cicely let me see i'm googling the cast and um she was a good actress then she's a pretty good actress now and journey journey bell yeah let me see use you cast Journey Bell is the, a Journey Smollett child. I don't even know who is it? Journey Journey Smollett. Okay, who was Eve? Her name happened to be Eve, and Eve was named after the. She was named after the lady who the town was named after because the beginning of the movie they tell a little story about how the town came into fruition or how it came into yeah for, you know how it came to be. And it's called Eve's Bayou because a slave woman saved her plantation master from some illness. And then they ended up having like 16 kids. And on this plot of land, you know, this plot of land, Eve's Bayou is like where they, their descendants of those two people now inhabit. And Eve, the character um it has it has that woman's name so and then again she is a very influential part of the storyline i mean this story is very serious the it's told from her perspective as an older woman there are times where she comes in and narrates so we kind of see things from her perspective a little bit um but the movie's great let's talk about what happened some themes so some themes in the movie are family spirituality Psychic ability, intuition, womanhood, marriage, adolescence. Um, Common themes. Let's talk about... Let me start from the top. The one in relationships that I find very interesting in this movie is Eve and her aunt Moselle. Moselle Baptiste. Her... This is her father... Lewis's sister. So Moselle has Moselle is her aunt. Moselle is very gifted. She's she has the gift of 
what they like to call in this movie a second sight. She's able to see things before they happen. Um, she has visions kind of like That's So Raven. If you guys have ever seen that show on Disney, it's iconic. If you haven't seen it, get with it. But she has like these visions she can do seeing people, reading people's palms and touching them and all this other stuff. She's able to see what's going on with them and all this other stuff. So she has these gifts and she monetizes these gifts uh, through her business. She is like a fortune teller, spiritual lady who, you know, sells her services um mind you moselle is probably like 40s i'm gonna say she's like mid 40s maybe you know maybe anywhere some maybe early to early to late 40s i think she's a little bit younger than her brother lewis who's giving me late 40s early 50s um and mind you eve main character protagonist in the film eve is a child eve is like she can't be no older than 10, you know? I don't think they actually stayed her age, but she can't be no older than 10. And I think she has a twin brother and um, who is pay- who's played by her real life brother. I forget which brother it is, though. I don't feel like Googling right now. But And then um, her sister is Cicely, who's Megan Good. And Megan Good is like a teenager in this film. So I'm going to talk about her, too, because she plays a really big role in this movie. So Eve and her aunt, Moselle. Oh, Eve is gifted too. Eve shares that in common with her aunt. That's one of the things that they connect over. That's their gift is um, what I think is drawing them very close to each other. You know, people just happen to, you know, you you can be close with your aunt. You should be close with your aunt. I wish that on y'all. But them also having this gift in common draws them together too. There's also things that are going on that are kind of pulling the attention of um eve's mother away you know eve's mother has her her attention divided in a lot of different places she's dealing with a complicated marriage i'm gonna get into that later and she's the mother of three kids one who's a teenager and two younger ones who just are being kids you know and then being in a complicated marriage doesn't make dealing with kids any easier um especially when you are a stay-at-home wife and your spouse is not in the home in the home with you majority of the time to help you with the day-to-day task of being the motherfucking boss being the boss of your house being the you know being the queen you know it's a lot it's a lot on a woman so eve is close with her is close with her aunt Eve has this gift, too. I think in this movie, she's coming into this gift. So there's a little bit of, like I mentioned, adolescence. And let me bring in specifically coming of age. That's a theme in this movie, too. Eve is no older than 10, probably a little bit younger. And just, you know, with the mother that is a little bit occupied, an aunt that has some free time, and then just trying to walk into her gifts and knowing things and seeing things and her coming into her womanhood as a little bit of a young child a little bit of a young woman and trying to balance that with psychic gifts that's kind of a lot for a child when you really think about it um I know that because I was one of those kids like who did have intuition and who knew things I always knew things um growing up and so when you kind of like when when you're an observant child that sees the adults around you behave a certain way and do a certain do certain things you can start putting things together and making conclusions and making your own ideas and thoughts about how you feel about what's going on around you and you know this this happens especially again if you have intuition and you, you, you know, your things happen around you that prove your intuition right you now have to balance this new thing that you're dealing with it's it's, it's a sixth sense sixth sense it's just like when a baby is walking into smell, taste, touch, sight, all this other shit, you know, your five senses, walking into your sixth sense of intuition as a woman is a balancing act. It is um, a responsibility to whom much is given, much is tested, right? So let's let's take that into consideration. So even her aunt, super close, Aunt Moselle struggles with fertility and marriage. 
This is something that we see, or uh, this is like a trope, you know what I'm saying? Or like a reoccurring theme that we see in, um, that we see with black women in pop culture and media references, you know? We usually have the money together, we have the look together, we have everything else together, but we are lacking a spouse. And that is something that Moselle is suffering with. There's also that other toxic end of that spectrum where you have a woman like Roz, Moselle's sister-in-law, who's married to um, Moselle's brother, Louis. Again, I'm just trying to really get you guys to understand this family dynamic here. You know, Mo, uh, Roz is married with children. The things that Moselle wants, she has them, but she is just as unhappy feels maybe just as unfulfilled just as maybe a little bit overwhelmed even maybe not unfulfilled but maybe overwhelmed holding a lot of stuff down by herself you know dealing with a lot of things alone in isolation so let's take that into consideration if i had to pull a tarot card for that Roz gives me queen of cups reversed um <clears throat> they oh yes that may be that they that you know what that may be another reason why Eve and her another little bit of layer as to the closeness of Eve and her aunt because Moselle doesn't have kids so she sees her nieces and nephews you know definitely kind of a little bit as her own because she wants children of her own so let's add that element in there but they do bond they are they are very close and you know whatever whatever so that's one relationship let's talk about Eve's dad Let's just go ahead and talk about Lewis, right? Lewis is a doctor. He's making good money. He's doing his thing, you know. But Lewis is unfulfilled too. Has a beautiful wife. Roz is gorgeous. And his beautiful children. You know, they did cast a, uh, attractive actresses and actors for this movie. So these people really are good looking ass people. I'm serious. And he has these things, but he is he too is a little bit feels a little bit unfulfilled. Um, there's a time in the movie where he says, I'm just a small town doctor pushing pills or whatever. So he may feel unfulfilled in his career, you know, and Roz, you know, when you look at that marriage and that family dynamic, she feels a bit unfulfilled too in her marriage and even in her career. She states in the film at one point how, you know, he I guess kind of maybe whisked her off her feet and was like, oh, I can, I can heal things and I heal people. And so she, that was one of her main reasons for marrying him. He fixes things, but all he really is doing is like breaking her down, which is really ironic, right? You know, you marry someone because you feel like, oh, they're a healer, but they happen to be the very source of all of this damage that is fucking up the family and y'all's marriage. So let's just take that into consideration. Just something to think about. Just, you know, noted. Um, part of an analysis here. What else do I want to mention? Let's mention Sicily and... Oh, yeah. The Bemi dynamic. Let's talk about Sicily for a little bit. Sicily is the eldest daughter, played by Megan Good. Sicily is a little bratty, a little spoiled, you know. But she's going through something psychologically. I don't know what Sicily is going through. But she's going through something psychologically in this film that is slightly disturbing. She She's like trying to morph into her mother. Um, dying for the uh, attention and affection from her father. Her father's not around a lot. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about absence in this movie. Let's talk about how... Um, I feel like as Eve growing into her intuition, her sixth sense, she needs that at her age and what she's going through in this period of her life in this movie, she needs someone like Moselle around for guidance and leadership. Moselle does offer her that guidance leadership in this film. She does in a constructive way because there is another force that comes into this film too that really doesn't deal with, um the spiritual stuff very well 
you know, I don't now that I'm now that I'm older. Cause see, I first saw East Bayou as a child myself. So no, I didn't really understand what was going on because the movie does speak about abstract topics. It speaks about spirituality. It speaks about a sixth sense. It speaks about second sight, gifts, all these things. So as a child, yes, you know, and as a young kid, like I couldn't process some of the some of the things that the movie was putting down. Because the best movies are subtle. You know, it shouldn't, you know, it should be something that you just have to like pay attention to and pick up on. That's the best films work like that. So Eve needs Moselle, but Cicely needs Lewis. Cicely is a teenage girl who needs her mom or oh, needs her father. But just how Roz is kind of like mentally absent a little bit Lewis is physically absent a lot he is and his absence in the film is fucking with his family but his own insecurities and selfishness doesn't really allow him to see this because when people are doing what they want to do all they're caught up in is what they want to do and you know he's being a child and the fact that he's not realizing like what you you are a father and a husband so your actions don't just affect you you're not a single man anymore who can just stick and move as you want like you are a you 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 are the head of somebody's household so your actions are going even if you feel like oh i'm being sneaky with it i'm doing it in the dark blah 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 you think that But you're a fool because an adult knows that you cannot do anything as a parent that is not or will not somehow come back around and affect your children. So that's something that's wrong with Lewis. But Lewis is physically absent, which is causing some issues with his daughter, Cicely. Cicely wants her father around. She needs her father around. Young girls need their father around. She loves her father. She idolizes her father. She's like obsessed with Lewis. Like Cicely loves Lewis. But there's something wrong with the way she loves him. She loves her dad, right? But there's something wrong with her um, loving him to the point she wants to, like, be romantic with him. I don't know where that's coming from. But that's something that is disturbing. That's something that's intriguing. It's like, what is making you want to morph into your mother? And maybe she feels this pressure that that that's the only way she's going to get his attention, you know, because in the film, Lewis does spend a lot of time when he is around. Him and the mom do have to spend some time talking and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, he's not even around much. So usually the time he is around, because he hasn't been around for so long, he usually has to check in and report and, you know what I'm saying, follow up with Roz by the time, you know, Sissy's mom, his wife, by the time he makes it home. So he doesn't really have, and then after that shit happens, he's usually right back at the door. So it's just, or, you know, asleep, you know what I'm saying? Not, not present, not present. And you can be, your body can be there, but if your mind is not there, that's just as toxic. Like just the lack of, the lack of presence is the issue, the real, a real big issue here in the household of the Batiste. Um... Sissy needs her father around. He's not around. He's around with other women. And so she feels like, hmm, maybe maybe she feels like I need to morph into my mom to get his attention. And all this other stuff. And blah, blah, blah. But you know what? She's not the only one yearning for his attention. Because to a certain extent, Eve wants his attention too. Eve feels like you give more attention to Sicily than you give to me. So both of his daughters are very, like, starved for his attention and it is because he's not around much it's no fault of his children their father needs to be around more these children are not wrong for wanting their father to be around they're not wrong for for saying hey dad like you're always gone and when you're around i miss you and i want to spend time with you and that is what his entire family is saying to him and um but people sometimes have a hard time usually people don't articulate like that usually people articulate through action so we have Cicely who in the movie um in an attempt to morph into Roz and go get her father's attention um she cuts her hair and goes to the other side of town 
to go see her dad. You know what I'm saying? Like scaring the complete shit out of her mother because she didn't tell her mom anything. She comes back and her mom's, I've been looking for you all day and all sort of shit. And she's, you know, and, and Ross slaps her because she's like, because Sissy has a smart ass mouth. And Cicely is like, you know, makes this little slick comment about her mom when it comes to the situation between her and the father, which the children do in this movie. Like the children, Roz can have her head in the clouds or be like, I compare it to like Pisces energy, like real delusional, real, you know, full of illusions and illusions and all this other type of shit just real foggy you know real i'm not there like just it's just the shell of me here just the ghost of me there she can be real like absent-minded and her children don't fail to you know say things that like wake her up that burst her bubble of you know beam me up scotty And it's painful for her children to do this to her, but it kind of just lets her know, like, how much her children see what is going on. Like, you cannot talk about it. You can be in your little bubble and you can, you know, do whatever you want to do. But the issues that you're having in your relationship are very freaking obvious. So that's something that happened. Cicely has a smart ass mouth. Ross slaps her ass. And Cicely, you know, runs off like a little bitch. But, you know, cutting, she cut her hair like her mom. She got her hair cut and styled like her mother's. And you going, you getting in on a damn bus and running around to the next side of the town to go see your man. You know, that's some real weird behavior. And she does try to kiss her father. She she does kiss her father in the mouth in this movie. And that is an event that sets shit off. So, I'm really getting deep into this. And let's talk about some events that happen in this film some spiritual events that influence this film um let's talk about let me let me dial it back a little bit and talk about moselle's premonition so at the beginning of the summer moselle has a premonition that she sees a little boy getting hit by a bus She sees that, but she doesn't see the child. You know, she just knows in the the premonition that it's a child. So she tells this information to her sister-in-law, who has three kids. Three of the children happen to be her nieces and nephews, so she's right for telling her. She, uh, uh, Moselle tells Roz, hey, I had a, you know, had a premonition, blah, blah, blah. Like a good old man, of course, her brother, Louis, really doesn't take her premonitions or her or her spiritual abilities serious. He thinks it's all mumbo jumbo, right? But the older matriarch i think it's their mom she says you know she's usually right moselle is usually right about those things um so she backs her up like a woman elder usually does you know who again has intuition and has already gone through this phase or gone through the phase of learning their intuition and learning how to deal with it and manage it and balance and all those type of stuff so she has a premonition roz of course is a mom of three Freaks out, tells her kids, y'all can't go anywhere. She tells them, y'all cannot leave this house this summer. And the kids are like, what the fuck? Like, what are you talking about? We can't leave the house. Oh my gosh. Um, But she's like, no, to protect you guys, to keep you guys safe, you can't leave the house. I can't let you leave the house. So the kids are in the house bored for weeks. And that boredom, you know, my my great-grandfather used to say, an idle mind is the devil's playground. Because it is, or some people say the, devil, the devil's workshop. You know, I don't mind devil's playground because, you know, nothing to do. You find shit to get into, right? So the kids find trouble to get into. They're just being kids, you know? I want to really stress that because for people that watch this movie, you know, and I'm, I am grew up an only child. So it took me some time being around kids to realize, like, hey, I, plus I was a chill, I was a pretty chill kid kids some kids are more hyperactive than others and they just want to be kids like they just want to get into dumb fun you know they don't know what to do (laughs) and it's and with the mom with Roz being caught up with her marriage and the daddy always being at work yeah the kids got into some some things but they had they had fun during the summer as much fun as they could nonetheless until Let's talk about one of the main events that happens at the beginning of this movie that I skipped over. Oh my gosh. This might be even be before the premonition. Let me tell you what starts off the tragedy in this movie. Okay. 
what's her name? Eve, Journey Smollett. They're at a party. That movie opens up after the little dialogue, little, you know, opening shit about the Eve and, you know, got 16 kids by this white man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, after that, they, I think they open up to like a party or something. So it's this party, it's Roz, it's Lewis. It's like most of the town, you know, because Roz and Lewis are like the power couple in their town. At least how that's how the movie makes it come off to be. They're like this little power couple in their town. And, you know, they got wealth and stuff. And they're just like chilling at this nice ass party. And Journey goes to take a nap in the back house. Like they have like a little shed in the back. And she takes a nap out there and she wakes up to her father fucking sorry if kids are listening to this. She catches her father cheating on her mama with some chick named Maddie Monroe, Maddie Monroe, who's got a man. You know what I mean? Her man is at the party, too. This is some hot ass tea, y'all. Her man is at the party and Roz is at the party, but Lewis and Maddie Moreau are bumping uglies in the fucking shed and they don't know that Eve is in there, but she wakes up and she like, she's like, oh my gosh. And she knocks over, I think a bottle of wine or something and that stops the foolery. And of course he's like, oh, you know, you have to pull his pants up shit. You know, you got to try to get his life together after this child is busted and being a thought. And, you know, so... <clears throat> She knows what she saw and she makes them, she makes the stupid choice, but she doesn't know any better. She's a child. She's not stupid. You know, it's foolish. Stupid. It means stupid means foolish, but it's a negative way of saying it's a mean way of saying you're being foolish. She doesn't know that Cicely is a clown too. So she goes after this party. She tells her sister what she saw. Her sister unable to believe because in her mind because see at the time journey or eve doesn't know that cicely is like mentally a little throwed off <laughs> so she tells her hey like i i saw this you know and cicely's like no you didn't see that dad would never touch her because the reason why cicely can't fathom that her father's a lying dirty dog cheater is because she thinks she with her daddy. She thinks she thinks her father is her man. So she's not hearing it from the perspective that she's supposed to. You know, that's why sometimes like when women we know our homegirls getting cheated on, we don't say anything because we're like, uh, if I tell this bitch, she might be delusional and she might snap on me or she might not even believe me. She might you know what I'm saying? And because that's how people who don't want to believe it, they don't swimming in the sea of denial. But if it's like not your man, like you shouldn't really have an issue like processing that information. But Cicely has an issue processing this information because it is if Eve tells her mother this. You see what I'm saying? It's if it's if Rod's is hearing this and she's like, "What? No, girl, my man could never." You know. So um, Cicely is processing this information a little wrong, a little weirdly. Because she's got something going on mentally already. So time passes. But Eve knows what she saw, right? She can't ignore what she saw. Um, let's see. That happens, right? Some day Eve goes out to the, to the market. To the town, to the market. And she sees... This woman, this fortune teller woman, this other fortune teller who's in like a white face painting. She looks pretty freaking creepy. Um, she's got like cat bones and shit. So she's doing like maybe voodoo, you know, that this is some other type of shit here, right? So Eve speaks with her. I think Eve tells her she's got a problem on her hands. Because she knows about her father with this running around. You know, there is also a scene in this film where Eve is with her dad on a day at work. And he does cheat on her mother. You know, mess with some other woman. He makes Eve sit outside as he fixes an issue with this client of his, this patient of his. You know what I mean? So he's really out here moving crazy. 
and Eve is aware of what is going on. So she, you know, like a young girl walking her walking into her intuition she goes to other spiritual women to try to get some answers about this because she's like this is some serious shit to her it's some serious shit because it's affecting her mother that's why it's serious it's affecting her family um you know she may not oh she also feels like this is affecting her family because Sicily there was a night Sicily kissed when she kissed her dad her father pushed her off of him. Cicely could not handle the rejection of her father. So she went and told Eve that her father did something to her. She twisted the story. She lied. She went around. That incident kicked off a behavioral change in Cicely. To where Cicely, this, this bearing this rejection was a lot for her. And she went to you know, not eating and then having her period. Again, adolescence is a theme in this movie, coming of age, her walking into her womanhood, this desire for a man, this, you know, but being a bit misguided, you know, Cicely gets her period. She's a teenager. She gets her period in this film and it just makes her somebody else. It turns her into somebody else. She becomes this young, she turns into this shy child who's ashamed of this, phenomenon happening and yes for young girls periods are not fun they're they're painful they're uncomfortable and you know they usually come out of nowhere but Cicely you know she she becomes ashamed of her father seeing her she's like don't look at me just all weird and shit you know (laughs) because she is looking at her father as he's like a lover this is some this is some weird shit y'all so she goes to Eve because Cicely uses they see they have a they have a dynamic too you know this older sister little sister shit uh Eve looks up to Cicely as a young sister should look up to her big sister right she looks up to uh, Cicely she respects Cicely you know it doesn't help that Cicely does kind of have like this bossy nature to her and it doesn't help that Cicely kind of wants to be the mother she wants to be her mother so she carries herself with this in this energy of dominance she carries herself in this energy of i want to be little queen bitch you know real regina george you know energy so she carries herself like that and thus the younger siblings kind of fall in line with this with this energy right so eve really gives a fuck about what cicely says and what cicely thinks so and she believes her so when cicely comes to eve and tells her oh daddy hurt me he did blah 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 you know, all Eve can think is, you've hurt my sister. And then Eve kind of goes dark. She uses her skills to, you know, being misguided. You know, they're both misguided in a way. You know, Cicely being a bit misguided misguides her sister. You know, the blind leading the blind, huh? Really. So Eve meets this fortune teller out in town one day. She tells her she's got some problems. Someone even hurt her family. Yada, yada, yada. And then they meet up creepy ass house on the on the swamp and this woman is creepy this woman and and here's the tea this woman i don't think uh eve is aware this woman has an issue with her aunt this woman has an issue with moselle you know they're both fortune tellers or they're both you know in the spiritual practice field spiritual services field and they have beef because this woman that, um, I forget her name, this woman that, you know, Eve meets, believes that Eve's aunt is a uh, fraud, and she believes that Eve's family is, is, like, cursed, you know, she's, you know, she's not really fucking with Eve's family like that, so, Eve goes to her, naive, you know, being naive, young and naive, you know, and she's like, this person to hurt my family. And she says, I want him dead. I want him dead. I want him dead. Because she believes, she's like, how could you dare hurt my sister? You've hurt my sister and I'm going to kill you. This is how Eve, you know, a young child. Um, and let, let's talk about this. You know, this is why magic and all of that spiritual shit, you know, does it needs to be very heavily monitored. And it really needs to be out of the care of kids. Kids do not need to be practicing spell work. 
y'all y'all grown asses don't need to be practicing a uh, love magic neither i keep telling y'all leave that shit alone but and be careful with that money magic too but i'm serious um children do not need to be practicing magic they don't need to be up in the up in that shit at all because i'm looking back and as an adult you know why did you help this child with some of this stuff you know what I'm saying why did you do that you should not have done that this is a child who you know children you know like chicken nuggets today hate them tomorrow you know you should have never taken this child up on such a serious uh request but when you have a when you got beef you know what i mean you you'll do anything so you know eve offered her 20 bucks which at the time was a whole lot of money so the lady didn't turn the money down she took the money eve seemed serious this woman is an irresponsible bitch and I'm just going to be completely honest. She's an irresponsible bitch. And, you know, and so she took the money and she did this nasty ass work. So she did some spell work that left Eve's father dead. You know, Eve's father fell on his own sword. So, which is what the lady told her. The woman told her this when Eve, when her father did pass and Eve realized that Cicely lied and she was like, oh my God you know he's really dead and she was like you know girl some sometimes it's so to follow his own sword you know and that's what happened because what happened was the woman that he was cheating on Roz with Louis Maddie Moreau her husband you know see that's the thing about cheating y'all you never know who gonna do what so and who got what so he found out because Eve being a child not knowing better you know, and being vindictive and carrying a lot of Sicily's emotional and psychological baggage went running her mouth. She ended up, when she was out on the town one day, she also ended up running into uh, Maddie Monroe's husband. And her husband, uh, them two had a conversation and, and Eve insinuated that, you know, that Maddie and her father had been messing around. So that man found out about it and, you know, shot shot Lewis partially because Lewis let like his child Cicely let that smart ass mouth get him into a, a situation and so that ended up happening and then now Lewis is dead and now Roz is you know what I'm saying three kids you know three kids and you know t- and widow so that's just a whole lot you know but there's just a lot going on in this movie it's a great movie um you know the premonition ended up coming true with the child dying, but it wasn't any of Roz's children. So see, she, Moselle ended up being correct about that. And, um, you know, Moselle did have an issue with marriage and she ended up finding love at the end of the movie, but she just was, you know, she decided to not, I don't think she decided to get married because she had, she felt like she had like a curse, like a black widow curse where every time she got married, her husband would die because Moselle had like three dead husbands. So there was something going on with her. She was carrying some kind of energy with her. And then she couldn't have kids. So there was something going on there. Again, womanhood, fertility, family, all that stuff are uh, things in this film. Let me see if there's anything else. Yeah, marriage. Um, you know, men are going to men. Women are going to women. You know, don't sit around in a raggedy ass marriage. You know, sometimes it's better to stay for the kids. Sometimes you really got to bounce. But East Bayou, that's really all I wanted to talk about, y'all. I think I covered a lot of serious premonition stuff and spiritual stuff. But it's a great film if you're looking to know a little bit more of an unbiased, unHollywood opinion on, um, on hoodoo, voodoo, magic in a really light, easy to digest sense. It's not a scary film. It's a Southern Gothic, so it's a little eerie, but it's not horror at all. It's not thriller. You know, it's not even suspense. Um, And it's a great film if you want to just, again, unbiased and uncorrupt, you know, or not extremely corrupted version of black culture, black Creole culture in the South, black Creole culture in Louisiana. There's so many great themes running all throughout it. um, And you can't go wrong seeing it. It's such a good story. So even even if you weren't, you know, looking for anything spiritual to watch or anything about magic or anything about, you know, that type of stuff to watch, it's just a good movie with a good plot and great writing. Um, so please check it out. Eve's Bayou. Um, they're streaming it somewhere. This is 2021. Find it, y'all. 
and let me know when you guys watch it hit me up on twitter glamour magic beauty or on instagram glamour magic beauty and let me know how you like the movie let me know what you thought about it and um and any other takes you know and i'll talk to you guys soon thank you guys so much bye